Hello. Good day to you. Check, check. Can you hear me? Hey, howdy, Gonzo. Good to see you. I'm glad you're here, and I hope you're doing well today. Cool, cool. Thank you for that. Yeah, so, um, just getting started today, and, uh, Gonzo and I had actually been chatting about, uh, kind of rethinking this main page, so I already took the liberty of getting into it, um, a little bit, and as you can see here, I kind of chopped off the top, this is kind of still unknown as of right now, and I cut out a lot of things down here, but there's still... As I was kind of getting ready for the stream, I thought, well, we still probably need like a link to the website change log right here, maybe a link to the the mod list change logs page. Hi, Santa. Wow. Welcome back, friend. I'm glad you're here. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just I, I chopped off a lot of things here. For comparison, let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me, let's see what it looks like right now. Hmm? And then this is what I've cut it down to. Um, so I removed entire sections here, like media, boom. I don't think people use that. Um, browse mods. They can get to that from other points, probably. Like maybe that should be in the <clears throat> the entry point, like some way to get there. But having it here, I feel like just clutters up the page. You know, if you've never been to the website, you don't know what to click. <laughs> Thank you, Smallio. I appreciate that. I think I might have finally solved the sound check issue for now at least until I break it again because I'm about to make some audio changes for uh hopefully to have uh, lower latency so I can uh plug my guitar into my guitar head unit into my interface and then have it play back out of my speakers in real time because right now it's delayed and it's a bit of a it's weird to hear it like a half second delayed I can't I can't literally can't use it Excuse me. Anyway, so back to the website. Gonzo had mentioned, uh, I think it was the user's guide. Should be start here and then a link to the user's guide. Let's go, uh, let's look at this HTML right here. All right. Um, and uh, maybe it was this page, I think. Just start here. It should go, boom, right to this page probably yeah yeah okay well Gonzo thank you for that comment uh, says man I like how simple and elegant that code is and um, let's take a minute to break down what's happening here and why it can be that way so first off at the very top here you can see this little bit right here it says it's uh yeah yeah you ha I think you have um, and maybe other people watching along after the fact in YouTube land or whatever are thinking wow you know that's when you when you contrast this to what you see you know right here and just let's look at the HTML source you know there's like definitely a lot more going on than just you know 37 ish lines there's just a okay so granted this is the toolbar the debug toolbar that adds a lot to it but but anyway I digress um, you know, the, ba the the whole start of the affair is this thing right here, this extends base. And that basically is what sort of um, wraps the content you see here and, and gives it the kind of modding OpenMW look, you know, this stuff here um, in the header and all that. Um, you know, this template doesn't start until this paragraph right here. So, yeah, all this stuff and above is the base. Um, and you just get it for free by saying extends base. And you can do that, you know, um, this is sort of what they call template inheritance. And so, yeah, you can you can do that any kind of layer of template inheritance. Like even right here, I'm including. So I'm inheriting at the very top. I'm inheriting from base. I'm extending it. And then down here, I'm including another one, you know. So, like, you can kind of go both directions. You can pull from something underneath. And you can uh, yank something on top like this. And then, so, yeah, that allows you to sort of encapsulate things nicely. You got just the content of this page right here on the index page, you know, so, so yeah, <clears throat> excuse me. And if we look at the diff really quick, we can kind of see what I chopped out here. The page was a lot busier before, you know, um, this encompasses what you see live on the website right now. 
the kind of confusing start here, you know, the guides that goes to like a general. Yeah. So chop that out. Red means it's gone. Green and plus means it's there now. Um, just chopped a bunch of stuff out, you know. I thought, okay, we'll have I Heart Vanilla first. Because actually I have a few thoughts on that. I've been playing, lately I've been playing uh, I Heart Vanilla with a couple of things put on there, you know, um, to make the game better for me. Not a whole lot though. I would say a heart, I Heart Vanilla Plus Plus is what I would call it. Um, because I wanted to play the A Fresh mods. And if you're not familiar, let me pull that up. If you're not familiar with this, we have been, you know, crazy enough to get uh, a mod by one of the original developers of Morrowind who's added, a, you know, 30 low-level quests, to say, it says right here. Um, it's not, like, totally out-of-the-box compatible with, you know, expanded vanilla total overhaul. There's a couple conflicts there. So, hence playing just with um, I Heart Vanilla. And uh, let me tell you something. When you have... Uh, I'm playing on my Steam Deck, too, actually which is not the most powerful device. And when you have the right balance of like shaders and graphical settings, actually um, it's a fantastic experience. It's a great way to see the game. You have Morrowind enhanced textures. You have normal maps from normal maps for everything has a couple met textures on it. And um, I mean, yeah. So, and then Waza Bear's Lights, which is uh, gonna be a 6.0 thing that we're adding. I don't know if you've been playing with that Gonzo, but you know. Just amazing, you know, effect it has on the light. So anyway, put I Heart Vanilla first, just because I feel like that is a good, you know, like everybody should play the game that way. Um, and eventually, someday I would like to make, you know, kind of a launcher al alternative that would support the mod lists on the website, you know. And so you could, um, yeah, yeah, check it out. Okay, okay, <laughs> good, good deal. Um, that would, but the launcher might, uh, theoretical launcher project that I would love to do might support the list on the website, right? Like you might have a launcher with buttons just like this. I want to play expanded vanilla click, you know, and then you'll get that configuration. That's more, cause that's more or less what I have. If you've ever watched the stream, you know, like that's so, oops, you know that that's a, no, 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 no. Don't try this at home. That's more or less what I have here. Let's, um, with my kind of shell script machinations, I can tell my shell script, you know, do uh, total overhaul, you know, or do expanded vanilla, you know, and just by kind of changing the parameters to my little shell script thingy here, you know, um, it does what I want. Um, <clears throat> likewise, so could a kind of a simple launcher program that is somewhat content aware could could do that too you know um you could actually do that now with openmw launcher um you could make a profile name it expanded vanilla you know you could actually maybe maybe we'll do that on a future stream too even um that would be kind of cool i digress so back to here yeah i'm so i'm thinking that we need a link to this one to be kind of the first thing uh right here and actually let's take a step back because I kind of was so, you know, eager to jump into this idea. But let's take a step back and look at kind of what I want to do today. So obviously this is the first thing. Rethink the main index page. Um, I have a new version of the total overhaul patches cooking. Uh, Gonzo has been so most excellent to help me test it out. Uh, there's a couple patches for stuff that's not on the list yet. Um, but will be added. But yeah, I wanted to nonetheless, um, since they more or less work... As expected, wanted to push that release out there, maybe update the Nexus Mods page. Um, and then, yeah, kind of chug through the GitLab issues backlog. Take a look, because I don't think, um, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, and not to call the things that are there unimportant, but I don't think there's anything, like, really critical there stopping us from, like, really um, calling 5.x sort of a wrap. Um, and then Mock MW is something that's interesting that I have come up with. It's basically a way... So that you can use Delta plugin to create ESPs, OMW add-ons, whatever, uh, in a CI environment. So like on GitLab CI. Um, and uh, the problem that that solves is basically if you're making a mod for Morrowind, you need you have Morrowind.esm, probably the expansions as a master listed. Um, you know, um, let's see if I can have an example of that right here. Uh, mods leveling and CGD Lua. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this one actually has no masters. Bad example. But anyway, you'll have masters listed, and unfortunately, you know, I mean, whatever. It's not unfortunate. It just is whatever. Morrowind.esm is proprietary data. I can't just, like, copy that around. Um... Cool, thank you, Gonzo. Yeah, there definitely isn't anything totally crucial in there as far as I've seen feedback. Um, you know, so um, so yeah, anyway, coming back, mock MW is just something I made so I can, because the, the problem it's solving for me at a high level for people who aren't like into CICD robot stuff is right now my mods have basically um, the OMW add-on or the ESP kind of checked in to the code. And, um, you know, if I like change it outside of that, I have to remember to regenerate the plugin and, uh, and I could easily forget and then like publish the wrong thing. And so mock MW will allow me to make it so that the GitLab CI robots can build it. Every time I make a change, it's a new fresh plugin, but I'm not using any proprietary data. I just have plugins that are named the same, but have no data in them whatsoever. Cause that's all that's really needed. So anyway, uh, maybe we can go into that in a later stream or something. But yeah, that's something I wanted to publish today. If I don't do it during the stream, I'm going to do it later today because uh, I want to start using it for the patches, total overhaul patches. So <clears throat> anyway, um, yeah, so that's the general um, stuff I wanted to get into today. But back to this, rethinking the main index page. So I want to up here, let's see here, and another button here. And so this is going to be, uh, uh, don't actually remember the name of this page. Let's see. Guides. Guides nav. Oh my. Yeah, it's another part of the code I haven't really looked at in a minute. Guides mm, users. Cool. Happened to give it a decent name. Thank you, me. Oops. I don't know if that's what I'm going to name the button. I'm just putting that there for now. Let's see what it looks like. User's guide. Okay. Start here. Hmm. I almost just like want there to be just that. You know, there should be no choice. Just start here. Yeah. And then, and then we just got to make sure that this page branches off into everything that's, you know, necessary. And, uh, yeah, I wrote this back in, geez, I don't know, <laughs> a couple of months ago. kind of forget what's here. Um, and actually, if we look here, so this is coming soon. I actually have a draft of this saved locally. I'm going to pop that out, actually, I think, if I can. Um, and the developer's guide, which explains how to develop the website what I do here every weekend kind of um, you know you basically need docker if you're on windows or you're in for a world of pain I digress so this is what we okay I think we have I think we have succeeded at part one of this in that now we have reduced so we've reduced the main page I almost just want to remove this because the start here should link to these you know what I'm saying Let's just try it out and see what it looks like without those there. All right. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, LSP. <clears throat> yeah, okay. I will say I don't hate it. I don't know. What do you think, Gonzo? I'd be interested to see what it looks like on mobile. This would be a mobile with a pretty... Yeah, thank you, Gonzo. Simple, elegant. This would be a mobile with a pretty small viewport, like... You know... I forget what this defaults to. Gonzo says, Oh, the other idea I had was to have an additional label underneath the mod list buttons that say how many mods they include. Good idea. We can... Hmm. We can certainly try that out. 
Um, so the main thing I want to note, though, right now is, before we jump into that, is, no, 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 no. Come on. Okay. So right now, this page has, you will note right here, zero SQL queries. Loads in a snap. In order to know how many mods are in the mod list, we're going to have to dip into the database. So let's see what that does for us. It probably won't be any noticeable performance thing, but it will be interesting to see we go from zero to what just to get the number of mods. Let's try this out. That's a great idea, Gonzo. Hey, I didn't. I wouldn't have thought of that. Views. Uh, I honestly forget. It's probably just a straight up static page. Oh my God, what are you doing? The same thing that annoys me every weekend. Language server Emacs stuff. I will get not lazy and tell that no out of the box. There's a way. I just forget. Okay, let's see. Index here. Index. Index. All right. Yeah, it's just a static page. Okay. So we're going to have to make a dynamic page for it. No big deal. I sort of have the... the views, views, which are the Python functions that create the data that goes into the HTML pages. I have the, them broken up kind of into um, groups, you know, for, for, I thought, easier maintenance, but I don't know if it really matters. I digress. All right, let's put that one right here, kind of in keeping with uh, alphabetical order, you know, and um, we do want a cache page here. It's the one weird trick that I use to get, you know, good performance out of a really dirt cheap server. LSP clearly failing me right here. I shouldn't have to type this. I should just auto completed it. Hmm, anyway. All views take one argument called the request. And as I explained in a previous stream, if you didn't see, uh, HTTP, which is opening a web page on a web browser, is a request response kind of a dance that happens. So uh, every view, which is the data for the page, is going to get a request data, <clears throat> excuse me, as the argument here. And uh, okay, so let's see here. Um, one, two. I'm gonna bury the lead here and I just want to render. This is kind of, uh, so this bit right here is a little bit of a Python Django boilerplate where you tell it to the aptly named render function will basically render your data into HTML that gets you know sent to the user. Will be, so there would be all of this stuff. All right, so um, we're gonna send along some data here. Um, so maybe in the future we can do this in a, like a, a, a better way, but right now I'm just gonna have three data points. I'm gonna say to count, I heart vanilla, and maybe you're guessing what these mean. But it's gonna be the mod count for each mod list. And I'm just putting zero in there for right now, so we got some data to work with on the page. All right, now how do we use this nifty function that we just wrote? Let me, um, I'm looking at this screen capture and realizing this is kind of small. So how do we use this instead of this? I'm glad you asked, it's easy. Let's go up here, we'll import it. Put a comma there to please the index. Okay, that should be it. Ooh, okay, yeah, that so no problem. The Static view 
function which I was previously using takes an argument called template. The new function we just wrote does not. That's what all that noise means. Django error page, incredibly helpful. Really, you learn to like, you know, it's like the like the matrix, you know, kind of as Gonzo joked about once prior. Uh, you, you learn to see this as that. Anyway, refresh, boom, there we go. You can't even notice the difference. It's the literally the same page, just with a little bit of, you know, crunching underneath. Okay. How do we see the numbers now? And this might be a little tricky to, uh, yeah, so well, neat. And, so Gonzo says, neat, still snappy. We haven't done anything extra yet. You know, like, we're talking like microseconds of maybe additional Python time to do this, maybe, even. We haven't dipped into the database yet. Actually, we're about to do that right now. Well, actually, no. First, we're going to use my zeros on the page. And I'm wondering how, how do we, how do we make it fit in there? So I can say, um, first off, so I wrote this here. This is the data we're passing to the page in a Python view function in Django. The dictionary you give as the last argument to render is the data. See so what you name the data and the value of it. Key value, as they call it. And so right here we have, uh, I'm just going to put it next to the name so we can see it on the page. IHV count. EV count. TO. And there we go. Just like that. But we need real numbers, obviously. And also, I don't know, that's not going to cut it. It might be a little tricky, though, as I was saying, to position the text directly underneath the buttons. Um, might be. But maybe we can, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do a little bit of CSS magic and try to make it happen. Um, okay, well, first off, though, let's get those real numbers out of the database. So let's see here. It's been a while since I've did this, so this will be a little fun uh, exploration. All right, so models, mod list. All right, cool. Um, for the sake of exploration, though, let's uh, let's cancel my shell down here, and let's let's get an IPython section going. Session going. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. And so what I'm doing here is I'm just reaching into the database for the very first mod list that's in there. I don't even know. I really care what it is. It's total overhaul. Awesome. Okay. So let's do this. To we'll assign it to a variable. To one of my favorite things to do in IPython. You type your variable. You type a period. You hit tab, and then you get all the properties here, and it's it's lovely. And let's see. Do I have? Uh huh. Mod count. 419. Just like that. I have that because I wrote, um, let's take a look at the code for that. Back out of my shell here. There we go. Excuse me. Mod count. Right here as I whoop. I actually do this pattern in a couple places. Um, let's look at category just for funsies because we never look at that. Um, the category bit that you see here would represent the mod categories on the website. And um, so like mod lists, you have one category with many mods under it. You have one mod list with many mods. And one, one of the things you can do here with the Python code and the way you can interact with the database is I can say... You know, this mod set here is a is a a way that you access the data of the thing that the category is related to. You don't see the relation here in the category model. You see it down here actually in the mod model. Let's scroll down a little bit. And you can see category. And this uses what's called a foreign key field. And in database lingo, a foreign key is a way of just one way of describing a relationship, and it's basically a uh, as we're saying here, we have the category. So you have the mod, which has a category. And then you can do kind of a reverse lookup 
from the thing that contains the thing, and now we're kind of getting confusing here, like this, though, with the mod set. So if we had, like, you know, bread categories, we would say, you know, bread set. The point of that is that the name is derived from the thing you put in there. So anyway, that's a little explanation of how we get that and why we can have this little mod count thing that's makes sense and is easy to call. Now let's use that in the code. Mm, PK lookup will be faster. Uh, PK being in database speak, again, primary key. And there's uh, special optimizations for that. Usually. Ah, yeah, see, this is a... This is another error in my editor language server. I don't know if I just need to update my stuff. I might try that later on, but it just annoys me and makes me not want to use Python. Sorry to rant about that. I don't know the primary key numbers of the other ones, so let's let's actually let's actually figure that out because I do want to reference them all by primary key, even though that's wrong. Oh. Okay. Oh, right, right. So <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot more mod lists than you might have expected here because a mod list, some of them, like Total Overhaul, are comprised of sublists. And you can actually, maybe folks didn't know, but you can, uh, well, hmm. <laughs> let's go to the real website. You can go to a big mod list. You can click on a sublist and you can actually view the individual sublist just on its own. It even has its own URL up here, Total Overhaul Architecture. One of those hidden features of the website, maybe. I don't know. Um, so anyway, that's why we're seeing a bunch here. Okay, um, let's see. No problem. I can do this and use the primary key, by the way, because it's always going to be the same. I have a script that I've showed in prior streams that creates the mod list the same every time in the same order. So the primary key will be the same guaranteed. And if we change it, then, uh, you know, we just, we just won't, hopefully. Whoop, PPK? No, it's not a pistol. Okay, 74, wow. That's a, maybe I don't want to do that. The more I'm thinking about it, the more using primary key is bad. <clears throat> it's going to be cached anyway. I don't need to worry about a couple of microseconds for the sake of having no readability. So that's really what I'm talking about here. So we got that one already. Good. S R I H V mod. Ideally, it would auto complete that too, but my language server is just hates me. My Python language server, actually, every other language server is great that I use, which isn't that many, but the Go language server is pretty rad. Doesn't do nonsense like this. All right. Now that I'm done ranting. Okay, let's look at the page, shall we? All right. 90 queries. <laughs> there's a lot I could say about that, but I mean, the the... The reason why is because there's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of, so let's click on this. There's a lot of cascading 
queries. Yeah, has to scan all the, the there's, there's many relational and cross-relational tables, right? We have mod lists, we have mods, but we also have, you can see here, listed mods, which if I go to the model, listed mod here, yes. So this is a cross table um, and it's, it's basically a database access pattern. And uh, you know, I'm not a database administrator. I'm not a professional database schema designer, so it's entirely possible that some of the patterns I made, the schema I made, is complete shit. It's totally possible, and um, if you're a DBA and you're watching this, please help me, save me from my terrible schema. Um, maybe it's not that bad, but I mean, in my opinion, 90 queries to get counts, you know, um, we could do better, you know. Um, one of these days I'll just have to be not lazy and like write, you know, some manual SQL and we can drop into there and cause you could do that. It's yeah, 90. It just, you know, woof. Now, so it does seem to take some time here. Let's see, we had uh, so let's see if we can okay, that's a the cache rendering time. Oh, here we go. So 1164 milliseconds, right? And if we just say, just throw zeros in here and don't do the database lookup. Okay. And so again, we're going from 1164.23 down to 77. I mean, <laughs> the amount of computation. So, all right. I like the idea, but given like the performance hit that might even be not noticeable to 99% of people, I just, I'm, I want to back off from doing this change right now. It's a great idea. I love it. But until we have like a sane way of getting that data from the database without like, you know, increasing the performance cost of the page by many orders of magnitude I think I want to hold off so yeah again Gonzo fantastic idea and it was actually a lot of fun to look at this right here um but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna back out of this change ah. Gonzo says I know the mod lists themselves also have the number of mods is that implementation different nope um, almost certainly not. Um, and if we go, so that's a great observation. So if we go, for example, to let's click the total overhaul page, let's pay close attention to the number of queries we have on that page. I think we looked at this before 251 queries. Wow. It seems a little unusual. Yeah. Well, so it seems a little, cause this was like 900 queries, I believe, or not, no, no, I'm sorry. 90 just for three counts. Now I got 251 queries here and uh, the Django debug toolbar helpfully lets me know where I suck basically. And you can see here, we've got 205 similar queries to this select from, you know, we're trying to basically see is the mod. So what this does is it says is the, is it's looking at each mod in the mod list and it's trying to say, okay, are you in a total overhaul or a total overhaul sub list? Um, you know, and really this could be done probably a lot differently. Um, and this is where somebody who knows about database stuff, you know, could be like, no, no, you're doing it completely wrong. I have done some tricks to make the queries less, you know, considering we got 419 mods and stuff here. I think it's not that bad and a bunch of sub mods. Anyway, though, um, what is the cost of the of the page rendering here, you know? I think given the nature of the database queries we're doing here, this is not too bad. And certainly like on the website itself, it's almost instant because of caching. <sighs> I'm going to keep this commented out. I don't know. I'm not going to back out of it immediately. I don't know. I love because I love the idea. I'm going to go back. Let's roll with it. I'll deploy it to the beta site and we can like see it in action and see like, does it, excuse me, does it actually cause the page to load noticeably longer? Because I do love the idea. Um, but before we go too deep down that rabbit hole, let's 
let's go back to what we were originally doing here, which is cleaning up this page. And um, I think if I recall correctly, I got a thumbs up from you, Gonzo. I love this personally. I think it's, um, you know, succinct. If you know, if you know the website, you kind of know where you want to go, right? And you can use the search bar. But if you've never used the website, you're not given too much choice here. And um, I don't know. What do you think of like erasing this start here header and making this button say start here? Let's see. Start here. Blammo. Just right there. Maybe I can even make the button bigger, maybe? Hmm. Hmm. Ooh. <laughs> That's a little hideous. <laughs> well, wait. Can we make it a little smaller? Hmm. Yay, nay, I don't know. Got to make the button actually bigger, and this is where it like starts to get... Let's see here. Because we got to think about, like, this is where CSS starts to rear its ugly head and the way that you have to think about things to make anything happen in CSS. You don't simply make the button bigger. Oh, oh, oh no. We would probably boost the padding, I guess. All right, we're trying this. Gonzo says, yeah, CSS makes me shudder. Well, we're going there right now. Just just a quick dive. And we're doing inline CSS. That means we're writing it here in the HTML. Generally, you don't want to do this, but, it, you know, we're just trying. Nope. I didn't hear the car. I didn't even know. I didn't even hear it myself. <coughs> Excuse me. Roxanne. All right, let's see. Padding. So if I remember my pa my property ordering right, it's top, right, bottom, left. Okay, and then if you just do one value, it's for them all. So let's do 100 picks. Whew. That didn't really, uh... no, we probably don't hear the bikes. Okay, cool. <laughs> I wonder, because sometimes we have motorcycles riding by our house, and I wonder if you folks out there can hear them. Um, wow, yeah, that's hideous. Oof. <sighs> yeah, it looks great. Woo! Ship it. You like that, folks? That's what you're getting. All right. Uh, oh, let's do... All right. So I want padding at the top. Let's do... Top. 10 picks. 3 picks. 10 picks. I don't know. I'm probably doing something wrong here. I barely know CSS. If it didn't already show, <laughs> if that wasn't already obvious. Oh my god. I don't even want the font bigger at all because it looks bad. Its spacing gets thrown off. All right. All right. Well. Let me try just one thing here. All right. It has a, okay, it has a, from my, my code even, site.css, we have a hard-coded width. So that would be why my padding probably acts weird. I think it just being one button that says start here goes a long way, says Gonzo. Cool, that's great feedback, and I actually, I agree. I try not I try not to anymore make design decisions based on what I think is good because you know. Oh, Hudrax. Hey, welcome. Hudrax Custos. It's going quite well. I'm really glad you're here and I hope you're having a great day. I'm glad you finally made it. Uh, so, uh user from Discord, we're really glad to have you here. We're just kind of talking about um redesigning the front page of the website to make it a little more, you know, Easy to jump into, I guess, because, yeah, uh, when you contrast that with this guy, I mean, it's like, bleh, there's a lot going on here. I don't even want to count many buttons. But this one, we chop it down to, my thinking was, 
chopping it down to uh, you know what you want and you can find it with a search or some other link or you're new here and you you need to be told start here you know and that'll literally take you here um so yeah that's kind of what we're doing right now welcome welcome to the stream and uh, definitely feel free to of course feel free to chime in you know um with any feedback about what i'm doing here yeah all right so yeah i think we come to the consensus between gonzo and i at least that um having just the button there is good we also kind of this is temporary positioning of this but we have the counts of the i chopped it down and reordered the mod list and we have the counts of each mod here which i think would make uh i heart vanilla be a little more appealing right 22 mods and i was as i was saying earlier you know you throw some shaders on there and maybe a couple other things. I got a vanilla, I heart vanilla plus plus so I can enjoy uh, a fresh, which we were talking about. We've talked about this on discord, you know, um, it's not a bad setup if you're not looking to go totally crazy. So call it out here, make it seem a little more appealing. Oh, and another thing I wanted to do, maybe we can do it later today is I'm pretty sure there's no shaders directly on here. I mean, yeah, no, we need to have the shaders on here. You got to have it. Um, OMW effects shaders, volumetric fog. You got to have it. All right. Uh, so yeah. All right. I think I'm going to put a bow on this and that's it. And we might even deploy that 5.6 going out tomorrow. Maybe I have a three day weekend. Um, so maybe I'll put some time in, uh, on Monday and, uh, and try and get a couple more changes, but yeah. All right. Actually, before I commit this, let's take a look at the issues here and let's kind of see where we sit almost down to 100 it's like a dream come true and i want to thank you gonzo for helping and everybody else too um i feel like some of these can probably be closed excuse me oh and another thing excuse me i wanted to mention too is i've been playing with uh load order strictly as it's been recommended by m locks with bco i'm loaded quite late and everything seems fine um so yeah, we're gonna go. We're gonna actually do that update on the website. If not today, we're gonna do it tomorrow. But it's gonna be in the five point six update. We're gonna fix that load order. Um, I actually had a bug with M locks on my Linux distro. I'm using a very new version of Python, and, and the way Python does regex is changed in a point release and broke completely. So I just had to comment. It's like something that highlights text in red too. Something utterly stupid that broke commented that out and it runs <clears throat> but the uh, the map generator thing you shared in discord gonzo i tried running that and that's the same story like they probably wrote it with a like a older python three point release than i have you know and i got my rolling release linux distro here with uh i don't know what do i got python 3.11.4 and yeah they just yeah it's broken you know um let me see here I saw they came up with another release. Maybe we can try that one later, but yeah, if I go. So I had to, It's. it seems like it's kind of hard-coded to look for that. Um, I don't know, maybe I'll send them a patch so they can like detect when it's Linux people like me. Um, but yeah, I basically had to make a EXE link and then um, I did that and then this happened. Which, you know, this is like, I'm sure their code is correct for whatever version of Python they're using. And like I said, I've got 3.11 up here. You know, stuff like this, we really shouldn't have to worry about. And it's one of the reasons why I'm a little bummed on Python lately. You know, I remember when I started using Python, you didn't have to worry about, oh my gosh, is a point release going to completely break everything in my code? You know, but like that's reality now. So that's so too bad. Anyhow, back to the, um, to the mod list. By Azura updated, has new paths. Gonzo says, yeah, dang, that's a bummer. And yeah, it is. You know, I'm not uh, I'm not hating on Python. It's a great language. And you can be very productive with it. But yeah, you know, just moving a little fast these days. Hudrek says, on the top topic of layout overhaul of the site, what do you think of making the mod list change log a bit more visible right from the get-go? Ah, excellent point. And that's actually something I said before we started hacking away at this is I'm like, we got to put the change logs on here because there's actually a website change log I added last week that is basically undiscoverable. I put the link somewhere and then I couldn't find where I put it. Um, so yeah, there's actually two, you know, those two pages I think should be linked to from, from here. Now the question is where do they fit? They don't fit under choose a mod list, I don't think. They don't 
fit under connect. So maybe we have to back out and put another subsection here. And maybe I can call it like what's new. Let's try that out and see how it looks. What's new? And yeah. Yeah, good call out, Hudrax. I completely forgot about that and definitely wanted to do that. All right. Uh, what's new? So let's see. Um, I'm just going to empty that for now because it's going to be a static page that is named. Um, mod list change logs. And let me know if this is in line with what you were thinking. I think it is. I don't know how I feel about this name. It feels a little redundant to this, but it's not related at all. And I'll show you if you haven't seen this page, which unless you're me and Gonzo, you probably haven't because <laughs> we made this last week. And then I made it unfindable. Drex says, absolutely, yeah. Granted, all one needs to do is favorite the link. Making it more visible would still help, help veterans keep up with the changes. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, uh, one thing I've learned is we can't, like, make assumptions about what people are going to find and how they're going to find it, you know. And we could go a long way just putting it right here. So we're doing it. But I'm, like, struggling to find where I added this page. And I'm, like, asking myself, we did this, right? Let's look at the We did this, right, Gonzo? I'm going crazy here. Wow. I'm going a little crazy here. We totally did that, and I'm not seeing it here. Wow. Yikes. That would explain why I wasn't finding it. Yeah. All right, well, whoops. Now's as good a time as any to put that back up there, huh? Hmm. Do you by chance remember what was the path I gave it? website dash change log or site change log or something yeah this is weird i must have i'm gonna have to rewatch last saturday's stream and figure out what the hell i did i must have accidentally nuked it that's one thing of having a cool git client like this guy over here you know i can like just hit k and erase all my changes to a file and maybe i fat fingered and did that you know um yeah like watch i can show you i just hit k then it asks me, you can see down at the bottom, do I want to do it? And sometimes I'm just like on autopilot and I hit yes. And then boom. On the left side there, boom, there it goes. And and if the buffer is not right there, it's going to change regardless of if I'm watching it or not, you know. So, yeah, now I can kind of undo. Um, oh, my. <laughs> see what I did? Change logs. Website. Thank you. All right. Uh, yeah. I broke, and I broke, I just broke the page in a known way. Um, let's just unbreak it real quick. All right. So yeah, it's a bit of a bummer to um, to lose that change. I have video evidence of doing it, so there has to be maybe video evidence of me undoing it. Whew. Gotta make sure to have breakfast before I do these streams. Brain food. All right, uh, change logs, website. Static view, yeah, change logs, website. Change logs website. All right. 
change log. Mod list change log. Right? No, 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 no. Ah, thank you, Gonzo. Excellent. <laughs> I found that Gonzo says, here's the timestamp of us doing it. Copy. Bless you. I'm just going to put that in my notes real quick so I can check that out. Okay. And I just call that page change logs. Okay. Hopefully I've pleased. There we go. Cool. Although that looks hideous. All right, Hudrax. No problemo. We'll be here. Um, yeah, and I definitely ooh, really want to have Adam feeds for the mod lists. Uh, and frankly, the website change log, too, might be cool to have an Adam feed for. Let's fix this problem. I'm getting deja vu here. Yeah, look at this. It's in my shell history. And even I, probably in that timestamp, you said I'm going to be talking about underscores versus dashes and me being inconsistent. Good feng shui, he says. Nice. That looks a little more balanced anyways. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Totally. Um... That's a <laughs> that's a good point. It is. It sort of like makes a shape here that is pleasing, almost like a heart. Um let's make it work. Good feng shui. I agree. All right. So yeah, if I remember correctly, last time we only had one change log anyway, um for the website, which was I think adding the the change log entry was adding the change log, so okay, whatever. We can you know, we can re just rewrite that one and feel a little stupid. I remember writing a test for it, too. We wrote, totally wrote a test. Oh, man. That's frustrating. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Right at that time. Okay. I will pull it up right now then. Gonzo says, that time step shows exactly what the entries were, so at least you don't have to remember those. Very handy. Yeah, see, video evidence. All right. Hold up. We'll put it on here. We'll have a little meta stream within a stream. All right. There we go. Cool. I'm going to put that over here so I can see it while I'm typing. Huh? Website change log, and it looks like I just did a, okay. Probably a third level heading. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> it's so appropriate. All right. Oh, well, actually, I actually had a couple things here, though. More than just one. It's a good thing you dug this up. I was going to be lazy and just assume it was just one and then probably check it later. After I had some lunch in me. And actually, on that note, hold on. It's time to sit down.
And let's reinvent the wheel, shall we? So uh, added this change. All right, web C O T website. Okay, added notes to the okay. Chain a log. Ah, oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for the proofreading, Gonzo. I appreciate that. Change log. Excuse me. Let's put some links on here. And then we're basically at parity, except for the test. We will put the test back in there um, eventually. Today, during the stream, for sure. Thank you, past me. All right, well, um, you can't see it. There you go. Didn't snap, <laughs> and I have to get a link for that one. I was actually, I don't know if you noticed, but when I was, I hesitated to type that because I just wanted to copy paste it because I didn't want to make a typo. Yeah. All right, so let's. Let's fix that. And make it a link. So what I'm doing though, when <laughs> the unfortunate thing about this page, which I think is fine for now, um, the unfortunate thing though is that I'm creating the same problem that I have on this page. Um, oop, <laughs> curve page, change logs, website that I have on this page, which is unexpected. Anyways, though, um, if I go to a mod list change log over here, excuse me, we have the problem of a giant web page with a bunch of releases. So, so eventually, there's going to have to be some kind of a structured representation for this thing, so it doesn't kind of you know get off the rails with being huge. Welcome back, Hudrex. <clears throat> I digress, though. So for now, we're going to leave it as is, and it's just going to grow a little more slowly than the other change log. Don't try that at home. All right, we'll fill that in with stuff. But for now, mod list change logs will take you to this page. This doesn't work for some reason right now. Mod list change log now. Okay. Thank you. 
That's interesting. Because I'm not sure where it's blowing up. something. Oh, there you go. That would be what I broke. Whoops. Hudrek says, the full change log always served as a guide for me after I was done with my initial TO setup. If I want to try something new, it helps me stay away from mods that were removed due to incompatibility. That's a good note. So basically, you're telling you're telling me that there's some value to all change logs on one page. So maybe we, when we make the change to put the change log release sections on different pages, maybe we can also have an option to see all change logs for people that want that. Would be easy to do. Um, Gonzo says... If it doesn't break once, can you really say you did anything? That's exactly right. That's programming, you know, mantra, basically. Um, yeah, good call out, though, Hudrex, and uh, we can definitely do that. And also good call out, Gonzo. Um, and that's when we're just having fun here. <laughs> we're breaking things sometimes and then rem remembering or not remembering how we broke them and unbreaking them regardless. Okay. That was a lot of words. So website change log, good. Mod list change logs, good. We have a pleasing shape here on the page. I'm happy with this. Yeah, all right. I'm pretty happy with that, so. Let's put that change log websites. Let's make a test for that real quick. Yeah, it was right here. I made a test even. Man, I'm mad at myself about that. Thankfully, this will be easy to redo because past me already wrote kind of like this boilerplate you see here about, you know, how to test pages. So we'll call this a website change logs in keeping with the pattern change logs website that I have before. One of these days we'll have to go through here and make sure that the tests are comprehensive and hit every page. I'm sure they hit like 90-ish percent of the pages, but probably not all of them. And uh, they should. Uh, the nice thing though is if a page is broken and we happen to deploy the website with a broken page, I get emailed about it. Um, and I haven't gotten any emails in a while about brokenness that was unknown. So, feedback, okay. This is static view, yeah. All right. Having, again, a little bit of deja vu here, but let's... Uh, Hudrak says, I have yet to bump into a broken link even after full TO setup. Excellent. That's good feedback. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. Means I've done my job somewhat well. All right, manage. Yeah, see, it's in here. Test, change logs. Changes, change. Apparently can't talk and type at the same time. It's in my history, though. We did it. I know we've already established that. Ah, good. All right. And this is just one of the automated things that's going to happen to make sure we don't ever break it. Um, 
and it's easy to break it. I will demonstrate that right now after we get the passing test. Just a simple typo is all you need. Seriously, what is happening here? Oh, yeah, just the database doing its thing. Okay. Well. Okay. Why is one test taking so long? This is like longer than all the tests take to run usually. There. Passed. All right. With only a, a little bit of fuss. Um, let's break the page now. Is that enough to break it? I bet it is. while we're waiting for it to decide if I broke it enough. And just to note, I put a left curly brace and a percent sign. Harmless enough, right? Harmless enough. Hey, hello, welcome. Uh, is that an I? C Lang, C Lang, C Lang, WTF Vim edit. Welcome. Not quite using Vim. Um, Close though. I feel like one little test shouldn't take this long to run. But when I look at my process manager, I see OBS taking up my processor, so maybe that's just what's happening. Ah, <sighs> uh, welcome, C Lang. Again, welcome, C Lang Slang. We're we're editing some HTML here, some Python, and we're doing some modding. Whoa, and that didn't pass. Okay, that was a bad example. The test still passed. Okay, well, I bet if I did this. There we go. That's going to break it. And while it's thinking about if it's broken, let's summarize the changes we have. So I'm going to put it in there with... Um, Let's undo this one. Yeah. Uh, okay, fine. Let's unstage these lines. No, no dice? It depends on old contents, okay. Just unstage the whole file then. Because it's a new file, I guess. My Git client didn't like that. This is the effect I wanted, though. Boom. We'll keep that 5.6 block out for now because there's nothing there. What am I doing? I'm adding the code for the website changelog page. Um, and meanwhile, that test is still trying to run. But I think that's it. We got the URL route. We have a test to make sure that it can... There we go. That's the kind of typo that breaks it. All right. <clears throat> ah, salivating for the, Hudrak says salivating for the TO 6.0 beta list. Yeah, well, I mean, thank you for the enthusiasm. It's going to be great. Um, You know, I've been running with it here for a while, and I think one of the biggest call outs of it is going to be the normal maps for everything. And there is, if we do just a quick count here of my mod setup, uh, texture packs, let's just do uh, for everything, 31 different packages, let's, uh, normal maps for everything. So this is going to be a big one, and, um... 
you know, it's not hard to set up, right? You just download the thing and you put an entry in there. But yeah, like it's kind of sussing out because there's, I don't know, over a hundred. Like I have 31 here. Ooh, that's a lot. He has the download. The author has a download uh, selection of like a hundred different packages supporting all kinds of stuff. Props to them and awesome work. Um, you know, I've seen the Star War- Starwind normal maps. I've seen a lot of the, you know, modded and vanilla normal maps they provide, and they're fantastic. So um, that's going to be a big chunk of 6.0. But another side of 6.0 is going to be some of the fantastic quest content that's come out this year. Um, So, yeah, we'll get there. All right. You know, I did this last week. We're doing it again. Let's give the website a change log. Oh, yeah, this is something I did the other day. Um, let's see, do we got the... We do, okay. Um, abandoned. So, uh, excuse me. I mentioned this last week, but Abandoned Flat V2. My favorite mod going back to... It was the first mod I actually used for anything. But just a simple, deceivingly simple player home mod. Um so I have a soft spot in my heart for it. Um, and I have actually forked it and fixed a couple things um, to make it jive better with natural character, growth and decay, Lua edition, and, and fix a couple script bugs. There's actually one script that cites another script, calls another script that just doesn't exist. So it's like, I don't even know how to fix that. What is the script that is gone? I don't know. So I just had to disable that. Yeah, anyway, um, uh, so I wanted to put a note here because if you go to the download page, it actually brings you to the original page for the mod, which I'm pretty sure this website has been untouched for 20 years. <laughs> you know, and you could still download the original archive. Um, I have a copy of it, but yeah, you could click this download here. You can even get the ooh, 1.1. I should almost download that just for part of the preservation effort um or at least make sure that archive.org has this website somehow the website still exists this is where i got it from uh, don't ask me how 20 years ago you know a mid-20s me figured out who knew nothing about computers or games or modding really i was a console only person how did i figure out how to use mods or even get this thing working i don't know but i did um so anyway uh, long story short i still will point directly to ghost who walks this website but i also put a little thing here says Updated version of this mod is available here. Maybe that's a little bit hidden. Maybe I should put it on um, its own paragraph. But I wanted to uh, nonetheless put that update on here. So let's do that. Updated version. If you want a neat player home mod, it's worth checking out. Um, but it's from the you know it's from the early days of modding, and there are things in there that show it. Oh uh, yeah, I have to recrunch the data to actually see that change. Um, okay, I'm just gonna trust that it's okay. We'll look at it in a bit. Let's put it updated. Wow, that was five years ago. <laughs> Hudrek says to be honest I'm not worried about how many mods you add until you're comfortable with the 6.0 setup following that link alone the tips page which I'll open up in a moment made my setup break proof even adding dozens of extra mods worst case scenario it gave me a solid workflow to roll back safely whenever a mod has a serious bug or is incompatible with my setup awesome thanks for the feedback Hudrex. that's great that's basically what's my intention with that page um, and that's more or less the pattern that I use. You know, I've got some, like, special sauce that I use locally that's kind of Linux-specific. But more or less, yeah, that's what I do. And that was my intention, to have something that you can iterate on quickly, find problems, you know. Um, and that's, I think, one of the things that's nice about using OpenMW. So, awesome. Great. 
Um, you know, my intention with sort of restructuring the the flow of this page is to better direct people. So like that's one of the things we'll probably do. Uh, we might run out of time today, but maybe we'll do it tomorrow. But we can look at kind of, okay, so like what are we telling people here? We're telling people start here. Great. So what's here? Is this, you know, is that it? Is that enough? Do we tell people to go to the tips page here? Well, we do actually. Thank you past me a couple months ago wrote this. I apparently did a decent job. Just thinking like from my setup, like take take aside, you know, the things that are specific to like my Linux patterns and stuff, you know, you know writing in Emacs and stuff like that. Gonzo says it's a really comprehensive page. Yeah, awesome. That's great feedback, you know, because I kind of, I don't know, I can't, I'm trying to put my mindset back when I wrote it um, and I can't really remember, but apparently I was like just trying to think about taking away my specific things, you know, like my text editor, my Linux terminal, you know, that nobody else uses what are the important things, right? And having a having a good way to switch in and out of different setups, to use different performance tips, nav mesh tool. I mean, uh, I mentioned earlier in the stream, I've been playing on my Steam Deck, you know, doing an expanded van uh, iHeart vanilla playthrough on my Steam Deck. And honestly, using the mat nav mesh tool makes a big difference in reducing stutters. You know, you get those nav meshes crunched out ahead of time. Um, cool. Choose a mod list. Upcoming changes, cool. So maybe we could link to the website, change log here too, possibly. We'll put an edit on there. Um, Discord channel, bug, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, hey, all right. I haven't actually looked at this page in some time, but it actually looks pretty good. Cool, all right, I like that. So yeah, good call out, Hoodrex. We're, we're pointing people there. Um, well, actually, we're not to that specific page. We're pointing people to the um, sub pages under that. But I feel like they get the, you know, they get the navigation up here to get to the rest of the tips. So, and I think so, I arguably the performance tips page, probably the most important page on here. Savage Banana Soup, welcome. Hi, played OpenMW a while ago. Haven't had time lately, but am here for it. Welcome. I'm glad you're here. Um... We have time for OpenMW every week. Um, it's basically the only game that Morrowind is like one of the only games that I really care about. So welcome, and I'm glad you're here, and we're just updating the website. We're trying to uh, we're trying to bring some sanity to the main page here and also make sure that when we tell somebody, hey, click here, start here, you know, um, if you're trying to figure out how to get into modding and getting your game set up the right way, Start here, and is this page what you need? And I think you know, I think we realized, hey, we did a good job. We put all the important information on here, um, including, yeah, how to test performance, detailed information about various settings, stuff like that. I'm, ha I'm pretty happy with this. And indeed, this is the exact pattern that I use for testing, um, as we were just talking about a minute ago. So, yeah, welcome, Savage Banana Soup. Banana Soup sounds kind of good. All right. I'm going to, whoop, what did I do? Oh, updated time, okay. Right, it's not 9 p.m. And it's not the 21st. All right, we are 12 p.m. Jeez, today's kind of going by fast. All right, little diversion. My soft spot I have a soft spot in my heart for about a handful of mods and abandoned flat definitely one of them natural character growth and decay I put a lot of work into keeping that mod alive and it's my favorite way to play and I just want to give another call out to another mod here that I've been playing with that has been I think it's easily part of my top 10 list of most essential mods but this one right here Sothis combat pack just Gonzo, I don't know who Drax, if you guys played with this yet, but this is just adds like a little flair to combat that makes it. I mean, and you get so much more here in the in the whole pack. You get all kinds of combat movement, you know, other kinds of fun things. But this is, in my opinion, up there with natural character growth and decay. I can't play Morrowind without this anymore. Um, I love it. Let's go ahead and do that. Why haven't I done that yet? Endorse it, baby. Gonzo says, I need to play with those mods and figure out what I like in it. Um, yeah, well, so I recommend so I recommend just going with the defaults. 
you know, at first I thought, ah, oh, because there's like pop-ups that tell you what kind of a hit you got. And at first I thought it would be kind of noisy, you know, to have that noise in the combat. But actually it makes it kind of cool. It may- gives it kind of like a like a Devil May Cry. If you ever played Devil May Cry or some kind of like Japanese action game where it's like they give you like, you know, feedback about your moves and stuff. It kind of feels like that. And it, I don't know. It makes it a lot of fun. The only change I did that I will mention is that the stat shaders have like a when you're low on magicka effect that's pretty awesome but it's also like really intense out of the box i had to like tone that down quite a bit because i use magic a lot i'm running low on magic all the time gonzo says yeah i think one of the biggest issues with morrowind's combat is the lack of feedback you get from it yeah for sure and so that's a problem so solves completely here um and yeah there's some of these movement things are actually really cool sneak sneak step drain jump air dash I mean, I never knew I wanted that in Morrowind, and we have it now, and it's great. So, yeah, ooh, this is on, you know, all the mod lists that it's appropriate. Fits perfectly into I Heart Vanilla. I can't say enough awesome things about it. I'm, I'm loving it. It's making the game so much more fun for me. So, props, Soltis. Props. People have all kinds of conceptions about it that could be solved just by showing you have dice rolls. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, and I don't mind saying my first interaction with Morrowind was on the original Xbox and I got killed by a rat and I was like, this game sucks. I can't hit it. Hudrak says, yeah, Solthus is amazing. Actually, gameplay section of Total Overall is hands down the most intense departure from vanilla in a good way. Natural Decay, Combat Pack alone make it a whole different game. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Those two, like, and any time I play the game, even before the abandoned flat, which is my player home of player homes, got to have those two. Just really makes the game a lot more fun. And the the thing about it is, technically speaking, OpenMW Lua doesn't have a combat API. There isn't even a movement API. And what I mean by that is there isn't like, you can't go in there with OpenMW Lua and you can't like add new moves and stuff like what they do with MWSE Lua. They're making all kinds of new stuff. They're hooking into the engine and doing amazing things. We can't actually do that properly yet. And still, even still, Solthus has managed to like just, you know, change the game um, just with some creativity alone. So, you know, it just goes to show you when we actually maybe have a real combat API, what will happen? Heads will explode. All right. I'm calling that good. Link to my fork. I can't wait until you can because I have ideas, Gonzo says. Yeah, honestly, um, just the prospect alone of being able to plop Oblivion Combat into Morrowind. What would that be like? You see, the way OpenMW is being developed, for those of you non-developers who don't really sort of understand like the master plan with Lua and Oblivion and how, how is all that support going to work? First off, I'm not speaking for the team. I'm not a member of the team and I don't know their official plans. I'm only watching from the sidelines with my puny developer brain knowledge that I have. But what you're seeing in OpenMW right now is you're seeing the core parts of the engine are being dehard, what we call dehard coded. And that means that the C++ sections of the code have specific assumptions that they're making. And um, when they de-hard code it, they're taking it out of the C++ and they're rewriting it in Lua. And what that means is that the Lua is now available for modders to do whatever they want with it. So to kind of jump ahead a little bit, when we're talking about Oblivion support in uh, OpenMW, Oblivion Combat is simply going to be a Lua mod. And there will be nothing stopping you from turning that on in Morrowind, except for maybe it completely breaking all the mechanics and we'll have to like sort of smooth it together. But yeah, I mean, to me, that's one of the awesome parts, brilliant parts of the approach to building OpenMW Lua is, you know, we can't just do, we can't just give modders direct access and all the things because we got to think about like new features, you know, for future games. Um, maybe put some Morrowind mechanics in Oblivion. All right. Anyway, that's enough dreaming. All right, we rethink the main page. So we are quite a ways into the stream, and we've spent a lot of time on this, almost the whole stream. I want to get to releasing the latest version of the patches, but I might do that off stream. Um, Hudrox says, on that note, if possible, can you give a couple bullet points of why Pursuit took so long to implement in OpenMW? Because that's another absolute game-changing mod for Morrowind. Much more intense experience, cheese-proof. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, pursuit being, so let's just, uh, 
Pursuit, Open MW. Um, so Pursuit would be this one by Kindy, who is a brilliant modder. I absolutely love their content, um, and I, I enjoy checking out their work. And they're enthusiastic about Open MW. If you check the commit log for Open MW, Kindy's in there making changes. I think Kindy's latest change to Open MW Lua was exposing lockpick data and the 0 0.49 builds. Very exciting. Um, so why did it take so long? Uh, I believe in Mar in MW script, there isn't a way to um, to sort of like know about like okay, I'm in. Let's say I'm in um, at, you know Adam Asartus, which is the cave that's kind of right by Sadini, and I'm in there. I don't think there's a way for your script to really know like okay, well when I go through the door. I am in this cell, you know, and this is the entry point X, Y, Z, and and so forth. And the o, the OpenMW Lua API like instantly gave you all that information and the ability to teleport actors around. So like suddenly we went from like you not really having a, a possible way to do it with MW script to OpenMW Lua is giving you that information. And so in a nutshell, huge extreme, too long, didn't read. That's basically it. Oh, MW script didn't have the sauce that you needed, but OpenMW Lua just does so much more. Um, even it's in, in its initial incomplete, it barely does anything state. Wow, that's incredible. Gonzo says, yes, it was incredible. As somebody who's been with the project for a while to see like, suddenly we've got Lua and it's limited, but it can do all this, you know, it was really exciting. So um, yeah, neat, very, very neat. Um, let's go back to... Thanks for the explanation, Johnny. Sorry to keep interrupting. No, absolutely. Uh, please bring the questions. You know, that's great. Um, I love talking about these things and kind of like demystifying certain things because it's hard to understand, you know, why they do certain things, you know, um, and and maybe maybe they talk about why they do certain things, but it's like as a not programmer, it's kind of hard to, it's hard to understand. So I try to distill it as best I can at least. All right. Um... We got a half hour left in the stream today, and I don't mind going a little over if you guys don't. But we're gonna have to we're gonna have to dial in the scope. So let's take a look at the checklist today. We're gonna have to dial in the scope, and I think this is gonna happen later on. Um, it's not super important that it happens right now because the things that I'm adding for are, are better ships and boats, and it's not even on the mod list yet. So uh, it's just one that I did last week. I gave up, and I talked to Gonzo about this privately, but I'll mention it on the stream. I gave up on doing the Dark Nuts Dwemer Towers patch. I got it like 80% there. And then um, I was just seeing a couple cells. I was seeing dupes. No problem, right? Just do the thing to make them invisible in the CS, right? And uh, and then I would go in game and the dupes would still be there. And uh, so it's just something that is beyond my caveman brain understanding of the engine and its quirks. Um, someday I would love to just have like a Q&A with Random Pal. That would be pretty cool. Just be like, how do you do this? Because... You know, they know ninja tricks for sure. Um, and that would be really awesome. Um, and I did note actually something really interesting. Um, going off the deep end here. Don't worry, uh, Hudrex. I interrupt myself enough so you don't have to worry about doing it. But I did notice in the latest release of Beautiful Cities of Marwin, something kind of exciting is noted here in the change log. And he says, added a script and global to simplify the process of making BSOM patches. Adding a new way to deal with them. Thanks to MD, which I assume is Mel Mel Melchior Dark, for the idea. Um, so that's cool. I don't know exactly what that means. But like just kind of having a shower thought about it, thinking of my recent mod, Oh No Stolen Reports... If there was like some kind of global variable I could check for BCOM, I could at the very start of the mod... That's how I decide how many random choices you have. I could say, oh, is BCU I'm here? It is. Okay, well, give me that many. And I wouldn't have to, basically, I wouldn't have to have two separate plugins. The one plugin could support BCU I'm or not BCU I'm. That's an idea I'm going to test later on. But yeah, it's cool. It's exciting. It's cool to see um, just the one, yeah, just one plugin instead of two. So it's really awesome to see R Random Pal, you know, um, responding to kind of my. <laughs> doing patches and stuff in such a positive way and being supportive and uh and the community at large is like thinking of ways how we can make our lives easier everybody wants to make cool stuff but we won't don't want to do it in such a like you know way that other people can't hook into it easily and that's where the um 
excuse me, that's where the interface system of OpenMW Lua comes in and is really cool um, and will allow unprecedented levels, unprecedented levels of compatibility. Going way off the deep end. And actually, I have to take like a really quick bathroom break, folks. So I will be right back. Talk amongst yourselves. Thank you for waiting. Cigarette break. Ah, ha, ha, who drags? I used to smoke cigarettes. I used to hand roll. It's a bad habit. Don't do it. I'm not encouraging it. I used to hand roll bally shag tobacco, though. I was, like, really good at hand rolling. Sometimes I would say I enjoyed rolling a cigarette more than smoking it. And, in fact, one day I went out for a smoke, and I just thought to myself, I don't want this anymore, and that's when I quit, like 10, 12 years ago. Although when I drink alcohol, which is also rare, I want a cigarette. Anyway, enough of that nonsense. No smoking, Santa Hools. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's very bad for you. <laughs> yes, Malio. All right. Um, so circling back around here, uh, we've spent a good amount of time rethinking this page, and I think we made some good progress. I think what we have here is nice. It's succinct. It points people in the right direction. We just need to make... I, I feel like we need a, 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 a send-off section here, okay? We tell people where to find upcoming changes, this, that, and the other thing, and we need now we need a where to go next page, right? Like, you, you've, you've digested all of these points. You've looked at all these pages. You have a general idea. What is next? What should you check out next, right? Um, so let's. Let's go ahead and just put that on the page so we can see what it looks like so I don't sound like a madman. Gonzo says, maybe even a small description of the mod lists and links to them. Yeah, that's a great idea. Let's put this on here first. Um... What's next? ID. I really should make like a HTML tag that can like auto generate the heading with the link and the ID. So I'm talking about this and this. I bet you could write a HTML tag to do that. Anyways, talking Django here, Python Django stuff. Choose a mod list. So actually, let's take Gonzo's idea because I like that. Let's put this on pause. Let's go back up here. Choose a mod list. Okay. Okay. I know what we can do. So this is a user's guide. It's a static page, I'm guessing. Hang on. Jumping all over here. Bear, bear with me, folks. Users guide. Yeah, it's a static page. Okay. All right, so we have to do a little bit of what we did earlier. We talked about um, we want a, a rough count of mods. See how quick that loaded because it's cached. Count of the mods by the, by the name of the mod list here. 
we had to break it out from being just a plain old static page and put some database power in there. And we need to do that here too. So let's just, uh, not, it's not alphabetical. I can fix that later, but let's put it up here and let's save ourselves a little bit of users guide. <clears throat> here got the brand new view that we just created we'll plug that in users guide there we go no reason to put that on multiple lines and it's all because if I put a p comma here There should be no choice, though. It should just always be one line. All right. Python rant. Before I started losing my mind, what was I thinking here? Savage banana soup. This is good. Been coding for a bit. Mostly view. Nice. <laughs> you don't need to be sorry. And getting to grips with Flask. Ooh, I love Flask. I wrote a music streaming thing in Flask. Um, I'm actually going to be porting it to Go because I don't really like working with Python anymore, long story short. But Flask is awesome. Highly recommend deep diving into it. You can do a lot of cool stuff. SQL Alchemy for database stuff. Um, I never messed with Vue. I tend to keep my JavaScript vanilla, but uh, yeah. Uh, Savage Banana Soup says, what would be the pros versus cons of either Flask or Django? That's an excellent question. You could argue that I should have wrote this website with Flask. Um... I would boil it down succinctly to the to Django comes with so much out of the box, like a ton of features, most notably uh, talking to a database. So you can put stuff in a database and have dynamic content, much like what we have here on this website, right? Um, Flask has a lot, it's a lot more out of the box with nothing. There are tons of Flask add-ons and things written for Flask, and you can do basically everything that Django can do. But out of the box, it does very little. So if you have a, a web app that you're designing that's small scope, you know, um, you don't need to have like a user registration form or you don't need to have, you know, just a bunch of stuff, you could go with Flask. I would say start with Flask. Um, but certainly Django is what I actually learned programming period on. I learned to program by writing a Django app and um, you'll, you know, have a good experience either way. They're both cool, great projects. So yeah, great question. All right, let's use our user's guide data here. We What did we want here? We wanted the mod lists, names, and a, and a short. So this is a good example of some cool stuff you can do with Django out of the box. We want to we pass the data for the mod lists into the page. So let's go with mod lists, mod list, objects, all. All right, just like that now. Ignore this stuff on the side here. This is like my editor having a fit about stuff. But this right here is Django for basically doing a select star from mod list a database query. But you can realize it with Python. And again, Flask has database add-ons. You can do this with Flask too, basically the same way. But so this has given me a database query of all the mod lists into this variable mod lists. So let's put this in here, mod lists we're passing it now as context data into the html template okay wonderful user's guide and now this is one thing i like to do just to verify i'm getting the data i like you can you wouldn't normally do this but let's just go mod lists let's just slap it in there without a care and you'll note that the page is taking a little longer to crunch but here we go boom that's my database query just like that. Now, we're not going to roll with this, though. Because as you can see here, this is giving us a lot of... I need to. What I need to do is I need to write a database query manager that can give me just the high-level mod lists. Because you'll note here I've got total overhaul texture packs. Total overhaul architecture. And as I mentioned earlier in the stream, I think before you joined Savage Banana Soup, 
the mod lists themselves are actually broken up into, um, the bigger ones at least, are broken up into sub lists. And you can actually go into a sub list and you can view it independently as a list because it's a mini list. The big lists are mini lists all stitched together. So, so we don't actually want to do it this way. We're going to, I think I'm going to, going to do what I did on the index page and, um, just hard code the queries in there to be a little bit simpler. So yeah, glad we looked at that. Let's go back to the view. And actually, let's get the web page back up here. Browse all lists. How many lists do we even have nowadays? Sheesh. So somebody was actually talking about on Discord, and I really hope they come through. Bringing back the TES3MP server list. And the list is still here. I didn't take it down, but um, I haven't. You know, even a couple of mods that, that I wrote here. This one is one of mine. Um, Mark, Mark and Recall is one of mine. I updated a couple of these. Um, hey, that's my name. It would be cool to bring this back, but anyway, I digress. So let's mention here, let's do uh, tool overhaul. Hudrak says, just curious, are you and Tech Syndicate friends? He was the one who pointed me to your work. I still need to send him some major love for recommending your site, by the way. He talks a lot about the site in his videos. Never met them. Hey, Tech Syndicate. I hope if you see this, thank you. Uh, thank you for the respect and for the props. Wow. Uh, reach out, please. No, never heard of him, though. Um, that's cool. I love seeing that. And I'm glad that uh, you found your way here. That's really awesome. But no, yeah, I, I, you know, I kind of live um, under a rock a little bit, you know, um, actually doing this stream at all is a little bit outside my comfort zone. I kind of like a stay at home and don't talk to people kind of a guy. So Gonzo says, yeah, he does big showcase videos. Wow, cool. That's really awesome. Um, maybe I'll reach out to them. That's really great to hear. Um, it would be fun to kind of like do more you know make the make the scene the the way i see it you know the more we do the more visibility the more when modding scene gets i mean because uh, frankly if you're an outsider it might seem crazy how many mods and how much activity we have like for a 21 plus year old game you know what i mean uh i hv i'm gonna make that a normal font size so it doesn't geek out for my linter so much that's a bug i should probably fire with the lsp mode file with the lsp mode people is it shouldn't like Make my screen go crazy. Ah, Savage Banana Soup says, I'm glad you're doing this stream. Feels like a nice vibe and you're using Emacs. Ah, thank you so much. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Um, and thank you. I try to have a good vibe and Emacs is my jam. I've been an Emacs user for nine years since I worked in a common Lisp shop at two jobs ago. Um, so yeah, Emacs for the win. But of course, you know, I use Vim and VI and any, just whatever tool you need for the specific job at hand. Um, Emacs just happens to be my heavy lifting thing. You know, um, Hodrek says he has a really large audience, 600K plus subscribers. Wow. All of his Morrowind videos references my site as a go-to place for curated mod lists. Santa Hool's fantastic vibe. Thank you, man. You're biased though. You're my friend. Santa is one of my IRL friends. So <laughs> you're biased, bro. But I appreciate it. I take that. I'll try to take that as an unbiased comment. Um, and yeah, thank you again, Savage Banana Soup. That's great feedback. And uh, I'm glad you're all here. And we're sharing the good vibe. And we're making the Morwin modding thing happen. Here's the link. Thank you, Gonzo. I will I will check that guy. I tell my friends when their bands suck. Yeah, you're a good friend. <laughs> you do. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Oh, you distracted me. <laughs> I've never been in a band that sucks. <laughs> All right, let's let's move on here, DC. I'm gonna include the um the Starwind list on here because I feel like Starwind deserves a call out. Hudrak says reason I ask is exactly because his vibe is very much like yours. Oh, okay, cool. Maybe maybe we would be friends. That's cool. I often reflect on how many friends I've made through OpenMW, and some of my best friends are people I've met through OpenMW. You know, so. 
Respect. All right. Been in this community. I was lurking on IRC like 10 years ago is where I started out. Just uh, I was a relative noob at the time, you know, and, and all these things. And uh, yeah. And now here I am. Starwind modded, do I call it? Uh. Yeah, Starwind modded. If you haven't played Starwind, really just like a labor of love and great writing and good design. Iggy and Billy Fighter are great writers. They're great designers. I'm working on my... Spoiler alert, I'm working on my own quest mod, and I'm taking Billy Fighter's work, you know, um, Telluris, Astrologian's Guild, like, as a, as a, and lots of other people's too, but as just a, you know, study this to get good design. Gonzo says, the version number always scared me away until somebody told me it was more or less made up feature parody with the vanilla game. Oh, more or less up to feature parody with the vanilla game. Do you mean, uh... Gonzo, I'm sorry, which version number are you talking about? And what was I even doing here? Oh, yeah, getting the, the slug, the right slug. Very good. T.O. I'm a little worried about how much performance this is going to cost, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. I heart vanilla, I heart vanilla, I heart vanilla DC, I heart vanilla DC, Starwind. The open MW version. Okay, Gonzo says, sorry, I meant the open MW version. 0 0.47 doesn't exactly sound like a finished product from a distance, but it's rock solid. Yeah, this is something that to me is a little surprising as a somebody who is, you know, I've worked in programming and tech and Linux for like 15 years and it's a little surprising um to me because i don't like i don't put too much stock in version numbers because i know like there's a hold on there's a xkcd here that's relevant i know surprise right xkcd nebraska um but like version numbers aren't usually super indicative of right so this is the one i'm talking about and uh, and so you can see here in the comic, um, it says all modern digital infrastructure, right? And then he says right here, this little thing right here, a project some random person in Nebraska has been thanklessly maintaining since 2003. And I guarantee you that software has like a 0, 0.0 something version that's not above one. <laughs> and that's just like a fact of life, you know, um, very few pieces of software like because unofficially, I don't mind saying some people considered 0 0.46 to be 1.0 for OpenMW. And um, I would say yes. That's when the engine basically got, you know, closer to Morrowind.exe parity than it ever had been before to the point where, like, you know, the the number of issues you could put on my one or two GitLab pages. Um, but, yeah, the version number, I, I have been surprised to learn that people will see that and I think, oh. It's not ready yet, you know, and it's a fair it's a fair thing to think, but certainly 0 0.48, I mean, is like, wow, you know, just wow how much ground they've covered, you know, so uh, awesome project. As I'm typing this out, I hate what I've done, but we're just going to go with it. Um, uh, Savage Banana Soup says, of course, XKCD Emacs has a strip key bind for that. Yeah, 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 there's a, yeah. There's quite a few good, actually, XKCD Emacs ones, too, where they make fun of, rightfully so, Emacs users. All right. Um, choose a mod list. So, yeah. See, I hate what I've done here. Okay. You know what? I'm going to hold out. This. I'm holding. I'm not doing it this way. I hate this code. This is terrible code. This, too. This is terrible. I'm not doing it. I hate it. I want to do this, but I don't want to have any sub lists in my result so this is going to be a little bit of a maybe we can end the stream kind of doing this um this is going to be a little bit of query hacking what made that terrible code smalio says that's a fantastic question absolutely um because i'm like hard coding everything here right like i'm saying this is total overhaul this is expanded vanilla this is this is this and my approach above here i was just saying give me all the mod lists and then i'll do something like for mod you know for list in mod lists you know give me list name list description 
you know, and I could do it something like that. 90 queries and 10 lines <laughs> just to do that, you know, the code will be a little cleaner and less like, here's the section for this one, here's the section for that one, and if I have to make a change, I have to change them all, you know. Um, so in a nutshell, that's why that code was bad. Um, it, it's too specific, and this would be more general, right? So let's try and do a more general approach. <laughs> at least, you, Gonzo says, hey, at least you know your website is fast enough to go from 0 to 90 in 300 milliseconds. Yeah, I mean... It's a it's a it's a constant goal that I have. I want to always make sure that the page loads fast and it's also a small size. And what do I mean by a small size? If you're not aware of what I mean by that, I mean like when you open the website, you have to so when you make a, any request to any website, you're effectively downloading a bunch of files. And that's what we see right here. This is the developer tools thing, which you can open in Firefox. If you hit control shift I, this will pop open. You can click the network tab here and you uh, hit control R to refresh the page with no cache. And you see, we're downloading a bunch of files. We're downloading CSS, we're downloading JavaScript, we're downloading a picture, all that stuff. And the total size we can see is down here at the bottom, 87.77 kilobytes. Wow, is that a lot? Now, I'm not going to pick on Nexus Mods, but let's go to nexusmods.com. To be clear, I love Nexus Mods. It's a great website, but brace yourself. <sighs> oh, my. So this is just now, to be fair, this is a very content-heavy page, but we can see down here already 14 megabytes megabytes okay megabytes if we go back here kilobytes okay so that's like a, a factor of a thousand there's so much going on there ah that's a great question Smalia. would collating like files together to reduce the um queries number wouldn't that lag when you load it well, so I think you're trying to describe like asking the database for information more efficiently. And that's what we try to do with database queries. You know, we don't want to do 90 queries and 10 lines. We don't want to do that. Um, it's a complicated subject, though. All right. Let's try and do this the clean way. So let's go back to doing. Oop. Don't try this at home. Oh, my God. All right. There we go. That's what I wanted. Save that. Let's go back to the. Let's go back to the database show. All right. So let's mod list. So what do I got here? What kind of query managers do I have already? Because basically, I want to get mod list, but I only want top level mod list. I don't want the you know, like this is giving me all these sub lists. I don't want any of those. Um, now. Here's one thing that's interesting, though. If I can just type it correctly. Primary key 2 gives us the total all overhaul patches sublist. And I can say here, aha, is sublist true? Or if I do this, this is the overall is sublist false is parent true ah past me the brilliance shines through i actually made a good decision we can do this check it out we can totally do this how i want to do it with relatively little fuss actually all right, so let's give me, give, just give me all mod lists. I no longer care, actually. Objects. Give me them all. But we will, we'll do it this way first, but we're gonna make actually a query manager and I'll either do that on the stream or afterwards to make the code more clean. But give me them all. I don't care. Mod lists. Mod lists. Uh, that is wrong. Oh my goodness. What am I doing? There we go. That's right. Give me that stuff. Get rid of it. 
Get rid of that. There we go. All right. Mod list. Now back up to here. We can say for list in mod lists. And you always got to have a and for. And just a quick rundown if you're not familiar with Django um, and Savage Banana Soup. This also can apply to Flask. Flask has a very similar templating, HTML templating system than J to Django's, but you're not going to see like this URL sauce. It's not going to be in there. But uh, this little curly brace per uh, percent sign thing is basically how you do a template tag. And you can reference a variable with a double curly brace like this. How, this is how I expanded the mod lists value. And so we're going to take that a step further down here. We're doing for list in mod lists. If list is parent. Uh, <laughs> do you guys notice that glowing blue thing in the back to the right side of Johnny? Dwemer clutter vibe to it. So I think you're noticing like light coming in from a curtain on something, but I'm not exactly sure. I'll have to watch that later. <laughs> that's that's Smalio's desk, though. Gonzo says, oh, for all parents, is the PK total mods number will always be one? So um, so how, how does this work? How does this work right here? So real quick, let's just, for, my, for, my, for list in all the mod lists, if the list is parent, so we're basically saying under the hood, this is kind of hideous. Now that I'm looking at this, this is kind of hideous code um, with a linear complexity that basically grows depending on how big the set is of mods here. So basically, is the more mods that are in it, the more expensive computationally this is going to be. It's not really that great. Um, but basically, we're saying you are a parent if you have sublists. In a nutshell, is what this is saying. The biggest O. Yeah, yeah, big O. You know about the big O. That's what we're talking about here when I talk about linear complexity, though. And anytime you use this for keyword, you're spinning up another loop and, and linearly in increasing your complexity and your computation time. It matters a little bit less when we do it here because this stuff can get all cached. At the Django level, we're saying uh, dynamic pages. We go back here, we're saying cache the page, you know, um, so we can cheat a little bit. We can make sloppy, unperformant code. But anyway, let's go back to the page. What did I just do? Takes a minute to load. Oof. Our vintage TV show streamer. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. I'm kind of curious what it is now. Yeah, no, that's just. Oh, that, so that thing is like. A, that's my exercise. Uh, I have like some exercises printed on a piece of paper that I flip through. That's what that is. <laughs> and it just looks blue because there's a blue curtain on that window. <laughs> All right. Weird. Uh, da, 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 da. So yeah, here we go. All right. Um, it doesn't look so good. Let's make it look a little better. So it's like crunching a little bit because we're dinging the database here. This right here dings the database. Anytime you put a period here and you access one of these things, because we're dinging the database to get the list of mods, but then this is parent thing also dings the database a couple of times. Um, this right here, mod list set, this dings the database several times. Lies, he actually has Dwemer artifacts and doesn't want any pesky adventure adventurers or the Empire to come. Thank you, Savage Banana Soup. I don't want them <laughs> messing with my uh, collection here that's outlawed. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, it's not. this is not good code because why is it not good code? Because it hits the database a lot. The database takes computation time. It makes the page load more slowly. And we can see here, all right. Um, so this unfortunately is not giving me other lists. It's only telling me if a list is a parent. Okay, so 
how do I know if it's just a mod list? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay, wait. Hold on here. If list is parent or list. I don't know if this is valid syntax. We're going to find out if the page blows up or not. List not list is parent and so it I heart vanilla is a good example of this it's a mod list that is neither a parent nor a, a child um, uh, a parent or a sub list I forgot my word for it that I invented it is neither a parent list or a sub list. It's just a small list. Starwind is another one. It's just a small list. Oh, right. Will it blend is the question. <laughs> I kind of knew that was going to happen. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't like my parentheses. Mm, okay. Mm. What I'm trying to do is a group my checks here. I want to have not the result of the and. Yeah, boom, indeed. Oof. <laughs> not a good one. All right. Maybe this did what I wanted it to do. No. Uh. Website smoke. Don't breathe this. Yeah. <laughs> We're at time, but I'm going to keep going for a little bit here because I'm I'm in the zone. So what we need is a property here that can tell me when it's just a plain list. Savage Banana Soup, can you handle that in the route function? I'm not going to handle it there, but we are going to handle it in some Python. That's what I'm doing right now. So I got, I've got is parent, is sub list. I'm going to add is a plain list or just is a, I don't know what I'm going to call it, but here, let's just get the thing there. Is a plain list list that's what I'm called for now and you are a plain list if we are not self is parent and not self is sub list so something like star wind modded or I heart vanilla or I heart vanilla DC is neither a parent or a sub list that would make it one of these. So let's go back to my HTML. If is parent or is list is plain list. First off, that looks a lot better. That's less typing. But does it do what we want it to do? Hudrak says, would you consider one of these days streaming your playtest sessions? That'd be cool just to hang out and watch you play around when you're trying new mods. Hey, uh, I would absolutely love to do that. There's one challenge for that, though, and I'll, I'll demonstrate right now once we're done doing this. But the main problem, yeah, cool, it worked. Awesome. Now let's take a look at our database query count. 465 queries. Yikes. All right. We might have to wait on this feature again, gone. So I don't know. Maybe I'll push it to the beta site, and if it just doesn't load slow up there, then we'll roll with it and not worry about the scary high number. This says, oh, my 288 similar queries. Ooh, man. All right, one of these days we're going to fix that. Hodrex, um, so one of the concerns I have with doing that, I'll just demonstrate for you right now. Uh, total overhaul, <laughs> earthly delights. We're not going there. Although I'm going to go, let's go to a place that's busy. So right now I'm streaming from my um, framework laptop, which is a great piece of hardware. It's like a developer's dream machine, I would say. It's got like a sleek form factor of a Mac, but it's actually 100% repairable. And I'm running Linux on it instead of Mac OS. No offense to Apple fans. But uh, it has an integrated Intel graphics chip. 12th gen Intel chip, so it's like not a, you know, like a low grade potato, but it's also like, a, it's a potato, it's a high grade potato, and like you can see right here, we're loading total overhaul with some reduced settings even, and it's like 
struggling. And so when I get in game here, you can see kind of, oof, ugh. It'll get to a playable-ish, but it's going to be slideshow soup for y'all in, uh, in streaming land here. So, okay, I mean, I have an actual gaming PC. <laughs> Maris Piper. Is that, is that a I? Nice PowerPoint presentation. Yeah, it's, uh, this is, uh, it's not fun to watch, really. But since we're here, let's go, let's revisit a topic that we were talking about in Discord the other day. By the way, I decided I'm not, so I am, the only solution I will accept for this is to make these meshes right here have the right, you know, Towns revamp mesh. I'm not going to remove the wall. I'm not going to butcher Random Pal's work at all. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to patch it. Maris Piper is like a good potato. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So this is a good, that would be my graphics card. My graphics chip, it's a good potato. Like, hey. If I had to play it this way, and I assure you when I'm not streaming, it's a lot less choppy, actually. I could play Total Overhaul on here and actually really enjoy it. But, I mean, for y'all watching me play, it's probably not so great. Um, I have a gaming PC, and I could set up my gaming PC here. And I have a to-do item to do that, and I will do it someday. Um, let's stop that. Let's go here. Now, if I take it down a notch... If it's comfortable for you to play from where you're at, wouldn't mind it the way it is now. Well, thanks, Hudrax. That's good feedback. I'm glad you don't mind it. I mean, it's totally not unwatchable, but it's also kind of like, uh, you know, play it for half an hour and you have a baked potato. Well, let me tell you what. I'm just feeling the underside of my laptop right now, and you could probably fry an egg on it. It's pretty hot. Um, let's go outside, though. So this is my minimal performance setup. This is just like mop. Morrowind optimization patch. This is just Project Atlas. This is just stuff that fixes performance and literally nothing else. Um, and the and a mod that I'm developing. That's a secret for right now. I think I've only told Gonzo and a few other people about it. Um, and yeah, so I mean, this is if we pull the frame rate counter up here, you know, it's 20 FPS in Balmora, known place where the frame rate runs kind of bad. You know, um, I didn't do it much today, Hudrax, but like I do okay, fire up the game. Frequently, I would say on the stream, but, uh, you know, maybe someday we can just, I'll bring my gaming PC over here and we'll just do a dedicated, let's try stuff out stream. That would be a cool, really cool. I would be down to do that. So good idea. Good call out. Um, wow. We're getting quite a bit over it and, um, I'm not going to lie. I'm a little hungry, so we're going to have to call it quits here, but let's take a look at our rethink the main page just exploded into the whole stream. Basically that will be awesome. Cool. All right. Well, Got to basically my so I have a setup where I have my PC attached to my TV and I play from the couch. I got like a big 4K HD TV and I play on the couch. And I have like a tray with my keyboard and mouse and I just chill mode. I don't play my PC at a desk, but I can like easily move the thing in here to my office at my desk and and uh, and we can have some, you know, some real some real good playtime. Actually, a bug that made OpenW crash on my gaming PC for like three years that's existed fixed itself recently, which was fantastic to see. So. Yeah, since there's more interest in doing that, maybe I will prioritize not being a lazy bum and we'll uh, we'll do that in a future stream. So, you know, recapping what we did today, sheesh, rethinking the main page really exploded into like the whole stream and just like in a good way, right? Um, having ideas about how to fix it and make it better. But let's just take a step back and look at what we did. We went from basically this, which is not the worst web page I've ever seen if I'm being fair, to this, which I think is a lot better. Why is it better? Because if you know where you're going, you know, you already know where to go, and there's some useful links to kind of get you out there. But if you don't know, if you've never seen the website, there isn't like kind of this overwhelming choice burden here. You know, just one thing that's a start here. I think we did a good thing today. And um, gonna what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these changes and... Um, I'll push them up to the beta site and we can uh, test them out. Savage Banana Soup, I hope you managed to find time to stream regularly because I've really enjoyed learning and the vibe here. Hey, well, just you may be interested to know that I actually stream regularly every weekend at this exact time on Saturday and Sunday. And uh, we'll be continuing to do so for the first until we solve. I'll tell you what, I'll be doing this stream until we have zero issues here. And I don't know if you can see the count here. It's at 117. I'll be doing it until we have zero issues here and beyond, frankly, because if you go to GitLab, I have a modding OpenMW project 
I got all these repos of all my modding related projects, including some super secret stuff you're not supposed to know about. And some of these have like, let's go with NCGD Lua. Some of these have bugs of their own. I got a merge. Somebody actually opened a merge request on NCGD. Uh, oh my God. What did I do? <laughs> Don't try this at home. Oh my God. GitLab. I hate your user interface so much, but yeah. So, I mean, even when we crush all the, the issues on the website, we got issues on the mods. We got mods to make. We got mod helper tool. We have, you know, there's just so much to be done. So um, to fulfill your request immediately, I am streaming regularly. Come back tomorrow, uh, 11 a.m. Central Time USA to 1 p.m. Central Time USA time. Um, I'm here doing it every week, and, and Gonzo is here a lot too. I'm so grateful to have all you here helping me do this. And, yeah, we got 117 issues here, website problems. And you know what? Uh, thank hey Santul says thanks for the stream. Thank you for being here, everybody. We got so much stuff to do. Um, and we are lucky enough to be in a modding community for a twenty-one year old game that's seeing regular updates and regular new content. E even the developers of this game are coming out of the woodwork to give us new content. You know, so there's always going to be stuff to do. And Morrowind is always going to be my favorite game. So I think that's going to do it for today. It's been a pleasure having y'all. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Otherwise, have a lovely day and happy modding. Peace.